So I received a rather touching email, somewhat tear-jerking, which is sad to say. There's folks down in Florida. This one came from a resident of Fort Myers who has faced severe devastation as a result of Hurricane Ian and uh, is seeking help and preparation. And this goes beyond so much more than what we've been talking about here for the last few months. But at the end of the day, um, there's communities, mobile home communities that have just been torn apart and tossed around with hundreds and thousands of families being affected and facing homelessness as they have no backup plan. They have no plan B. They have no safety net. And I want this to go out to everybody who's listening that that's what it's about because you just never know what's coming next. You just never know what's around the corner. And honestly, today, 2022, rolling into 2023, there's been warnings and indications and hints and suggestions towards a rough and very, very cold winter. Now, that is a metaphor for the pain that families are going to face, especially those who are already near poverty poverty levels, low income, with uh, uh, no savings, you know, uh, don't make a lot of money. And then you got to think the Fed's going to get their wish. If it, well, if the Fed gets their wish, we, we may see them pivot, but only time will tell. By then it'll be too late. But if the Fed gets their wish, the only solution to they think to slowing inflation is by eliminating jobs and taking money out of the hands of the people so that they will stop buying because uh, what's going on in the economy, the businesses are continuously pushing the consumers and driving up prices through inflation and the interest rates, the harder the Fed pushes on interest rates, then uh, the harder the businesses push back on prices. And it is going to swallow up a lot of low-income, single-income, fixed-income families. Uh, but then you add on top of that some form of devastation like what Fort Myers has experienced with Hurricane Ian. And most people won't come back from that. Most people won't survive that. Not only did they lose their home and all their personal belongings or any prep that they may have had, it's gone. But most of them probably lost their jobs, too, because they they worked in the area, they were local, and those businesses are torn apart. No water, no power. And not even sure if they've even seen the first signs of rescue yet from what I'm reading, what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. And... The email asked, you know, this is real boots on the ground intel. This is front lines. This is in the trenches. This is 16 inches of water or more in their living room of their mobile home. And what do I do? Where do I go from here? I have no money. I have no savings. I have no credit. I have no car. It's it's total. It's flooded. And um, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys about. The warning is that you have to find a way and there's several ways but you have to find a way to a live below your means and b uh do your best to earn more money increase your income and look to develop additional income streams otherwise you find yourself in a situation like the folks down in Fort Myers and you get wiped out, like figuratively and literally wiped out. And you have no backup plan or maybe like a one-week backup plan. You need to have the ability to 
be mobile and, you know, whether that's through some form of funds for a rental car, uh, a place to funds for temporary shelter, temporary housing, a hotel, a short term rental uh, Airbnb or something like that. And ideally, uh, an income source and business strategy that you have in place that doesn't physically require you to be in any particular location so that if you have to be displaced to another city, another town, another state, you can still operate and you can still earn and generate income because this this area in Fort Myers, the mobile home community is done. It's toast. It's going to take years before the relief efforts and investors show up, which is probably highly unlikely with the financial situation and the quantitative tightening and quantitative easing that the government, that the Fed is initiating with higher interest rates, let alone uh, the potential for job loss. So we're going to have a labor shortage and then uh, the cost to rebuild, the cost to borrow money to rebuild and the higher insurance that Florida is going to see. It's not going to be very enticing for anyone to go down there and quickly clean up and redevelop for mobile home communities, for the people who have lost it all, the people who have been displaced. What they'll do is, in all actuality, more than likely, is they'll take that and use that to their advantage. And these will be private equity um, uh, investors that will come in, venture capitalists will come in, and they're going to buy it up for a discount. This is this is the uh, this is the part of the reset button, part of the great reset button. This is a redistribution here, and they're going to take that land. They're going to buy it for pretty much nothing, and perhaps maybe have some government influence and backing behind it through various layers, so that most people can't really see what's going on, and then take these mobile home communities that have been just torn apart and tossed around. People and their families now homeless and helpless, nowhere to go. And you'll see multi-million dollar condos and high rises taking up these areas of land that they had their eye on for years. And now it's become easier to, to accept, a, access them and then rebuild. But the people who have been displaced the mobile home park, mobile home communities, mobile home neighborhoods, the families that were looking at these as uh, their best bet at achieving the American dream without living in their car, without living in a truck, without living in a van, without being homeless, they're, they're going to be washed out, wiped out, and pretty much pushed out and won't be able to return because they won't be able to afford it. 